And welcome to this week's episode of Digital Marketing Today. We're happy to have Ron Davis with us today. We'll be right back. And we're excited to have a great program for you today on Digital Marketing Today. Ron Davis is with us from Davis Integration Group, good friend yes, sir, and yes, uh, collaborator. Always. So happy to have you here. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. Most definitely, man. You know, I'm always, I'm always glad to be around you. So anytime we can get together, it's cool. I mean, this right here is going to be pretty fun. Yeah. So um, for the benefit of our viewers uh, who may not know you, give us a little bit of background about who you are, what you're into now, and uh, what you do uh, for a business. So uh, Ron Davis Sr., um, owner and operator of Davis Integration Group. Uh, we're a social conscious group. We focus on different forms of branding and marketing uh, through a unique form of activations. Um, we also have a, a community value uh, called Layla's Love, um, which, which is technically ran by my daughter. She's a 10-year-old young phenom in our own right. And then we, um, it all started because of the Optimum Prep Student Athlete Program, which was a, a form of mentorship and tutoring that we had utilized over the last several years to uh, help kids at a young age, um, various different, various programs from education, financial literacy, um, competitive fitness. Um, every kid can't be an athlete, but every kid can be active. So that was uh, a term that we really, really held strong was the competitive fitness route. And that, that's basically it for the most part. We, we carry that's on. all? Well, just for now. <laughs> for now, now hope, well, one day we expect to be able to do a few other things, but mm -hmm. that's, the, that's it for the most part. Well, that's awesome. I know that uh, uh, working with kids is definitely a, a big passion mm -hmm. of yours mm -hmm. and, and impacting them um, for the, you know, so they can use things that, that they learn uh, for the rest of their lives. Uh, yes, yeah. sooner, sooner. Uh, less yeah. mistakes, more, more things to champion and be excited about. Um, but the, you know, to make that stuff happen with the kids, we got to do a lot of business and we create That's a lot right. of, of not just opportunities for the kids, but for corporations and entrepreneurs around the country. Yeah. So on the on the branding and marketing side, what are the what are the things that you really focus on helping people with? Um, so definitely content creation. I think mm -hmm. that's uh, something that's hard for a lot of uh, groups, a lot of individuals to, to wrap their hands around. Um, being able to create leads, you know, expand their market, whether it's a new market in that, that central area or in another city. Uh, that's something that we've done fairly well because of the youth program. And then, um, of course, being able to create that social conscience, social, social conscious presence. Mm -hmm. I think that in, in um, most cases, there's a lot of corporations that they fail because they look at social conscious activity as just charity. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, everything revolves around money. A lot of decisions are made based on return. So if they approach that with a little bit more business savvy, I think that they would uh, receive a lot more in return, both for the mm -hmm. community as well as their bottom line. I think that's uh, one of the things that a lot of people miss, particularly on the on the corporate side. A lot of times they're just they're looking for a charity that they can just write a check to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that they can check the box, yeah. you know, as part of their social, you know, check the box you impact in sometimes. statement to, or you're whatever. You're trying to check right? the box. You want to make sure that you, whether it's the write-off, whether it's the, the PR, um, there's so many different things that companies utilize the whole charitable act for. Mm -hmm. And I think if they were a lot more purposeful or, or led with more intentions of a, of a return, whether it's a return within that uh, conscious effort that they're making, or you know, get their money back. You know that if they did that, then I think that they would exceed a lot more within the, the community, within mm -hmm. the social side of things. So um, a few years ago, uh, I was introduced to the whole idea of the uh, triple P, right? People, planet, profit. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing, but on the sustainable side. Katie mm -hmm. and I had a, a, a brief discussion about that, and um, it's a uh, a lot of people think that if you're going to be socially conscious in your business that there's no way to do that and to make money at the same time like they yes. like they separate those two and it's the same thing kind of on the sustainability side you know people are like okay well that's all well and good 
but I can't do that and make money also. Right. And it's it's really they kind of feed off of each other. So. See, what I think it is is the bandwidth. You know, you get so um, gung ho on making that dollar <clears throat> that everything that you do is for that, or you're trying to get that attention, you're trying to get that PR uh, feature, or whatever the case may be. That this right here just looks like too much to tackle. And then in our world, we have a lot of problems. So when you're thinking about social conscious activity, which one you want to start with? Yeah. Um, so it, you know, for us and the little things that I've been able to create so far, um, having an understanding of what community means to a business and to the future of a company, as well as understanding what the next the next level of of, of uh, workers, the generation, that pipeline that you can create, we try to focus on that first, mainly because those things are needed, you know. Without without the kids and the community, you really don't have clientele. You really don't have a consumer, and so you know, being able to think for them on this side, while they worry about their product, they worry about their service, and then being able to kind of find a, a happy medium, mm -hmm. that took time, man. That, that not only took time, but even in this space, there's things can jump political very quickly, mm -hmm. and so for us to actually make an impact you have to stay away from as much political activity as possible mm -hmm. and you know some groups and some organizations are really committed to that and so mm -hmm. I think that those two things whether we're talking politics or we're talking about bandwidth they play a factor in why companies can't focus on how to be more social con socially conscious mm -hmm. and then the internet you know there's not a lot of positive things out there <laughs> so you think about social media what gets likes what gets attention mm -hmm. um, Anything where you can have a little distress, a little anxiety, a little bickering mm -hmm. tends to uh, get everybody riled up. And when we're talking about doing good, it's more like awe, you know. Right. And so we try our best to give you something passionate to be excited about and something that makes you want to spend money. And I think that that is going to become a very catchy um, positioning for companies here in the uh, upcoming future. Yeah. And I know one of the ways that you really kind of activate that is through some of the events that you that you plan and that you do. Yes, um, I definitely want to get into a little bit deeper discussion with you about that on the flip side. Mm -hmm. But we're going to uh, we're going to go and, and uh, take a break here in a minute to recognize our our sponsor for today's program. Uh, before we do that, one of the things that we've started doing on Digital Marketing Today and some of our other programs that, that we stream here from Sync Lab Media is we've partnered with some local artists to come in and bring artwork that we can feature uh, during our program. So you notice the beautiful piece of artwork that's behind us today. Uh, that is a local artist represented by David Call Interiors. Um, so if you're interested in some of the work, it can actually be purchased. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to feature uh, different works of art by local artists on all of our shows on a weekly basis. So I just wanted to give that shout out to Rob Denton uh, and to David Call for working with us to supply the great artwork for us for the studio. So now we're going to take a short break and hear from our sponsor for today's program. And we'll be right back on Digital Marketing Today with Ron Davis. Adults in the U.S. consume five and a half hours of video content every day, almost one and a half hours on digital devices. 64% of consumers say that watching a marketing video has influenced a purchasing decision. Adding video to a website landing page can increase conversion by up to 80%. Are you ready to win with video marketing? Now is your chance to learn. Easy steps to add video to your current marketing. Why a three-tiered video content strategy is best. Best practices for live video on social media. Pros and cons of professional versus DIY video. And tips for getting better results with video. Gain the confidence to grow your business and brand with video marketing. Request your speaker today. Welcome back to Digital Marketing Today. Uh, we're here with Ron Davis from Davis Integration Group. And we were talking before the break uh, just a little bit about your approach to helping companies and being socially conscious, marketing themselves as socially conscious companies, but doing so in a way 
that is sustainable for the company as well as the community that they're that they're servicing. One of the great ways that I think that you have uh, managed to create opportunities for that is through the events um, that that you've uh, put together. And I know that you have a, a big one coming up because we're working with you on it. It's been a long time in the making yes. and a lot of planning going into it. A long time. So long uh, time. Uh, impact, your vi impact Vision, right? Yeah, Impact Weekend. Yeah, Impact, impact Weekend. weekend. Um, okay. Long time is an understatement. Right. We're, 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 in, uh, we're in May now. Right. You know, and it's been an ongoing thing. It's hard, it's hard to really make a difference and make sure everybody gets what they are there for. Mm -hmm. And I think that some of the, uh, the conferences, the summits, and some of those different things that, that um, contain thought leadership, they, they do a good job, but they also miss their, their, their vendors, their sponsors, that they are missing. And so although it's a good way to get your brand out there, it's not necessarily done in the, the most effective manner. Uh, nine times out of ten, because the people that are hosting those events they don't necessarily specialize in brand awareness or marketing or things that get you what you're you're after. They can bring people to the to the to the hall for everybody to get a drink, but it's all you know what they're actually serving up is sometimes misguided, and so that was something that we had to make sure that we did first. Whoever a sponsor, a vendor, a donor, anybody that's taking their time for this cause, we wanted to make sure that they understood that there's plenty inside of this for them, and uh, from there making sure that the run of show goes well. You know, mm -hmm. we, you got to uh, make sure your venues are, are, are adequate and they can fit what you're looking for as far as numbers. Um, in a city like Dallas, you want to be able to compete. Um, so this, the, the trying to find that date that works perfectly is mm -hmm. almost impossible. Yeah, there's always um, something there's going always on. There's always something going on. There's, you know, it, it's, it's key hot locations that are going to be able to be uh, centrally located. So that's a, a big issue. And then you have to make sure your target market and audience is aware that you're there. Um, I don't know. I can't. I mean, outside of us being confident with our business, I have no clue how we got to the point where we can reach folks mm. um, on a consistent level. But those are all key factors for the impact weekend to actually make sense. Um, so we, what we wanted to make sure that we did was that we're going to give everybody something to do, uh, from that seven-year-old kid to that seventy-five-year-old. A professional or a person that just enjoys thought leadership, um, we try to spread that out. So within the Impact Weekend, we're going to have a golfing event, um, the OP Scramble, um, trying to bring in your community dignitaries along with your corporate leaders, a couple of athletes mixed in there, and then your sponsors. Um, that afternoon, we'll go into the actual workshop seminar podcast um, segment of this entire deal, which is a basically, you know, we're going to carry thought leadership. I think we have a video that kind of talks about some of the groups that we're going to focus on. Um, so having live podcasts, having a couple of seminar leaders speak, and then, of course, happy hour. We, mm -hmm. gotta, we have to throw that in there somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. We want to be able to be social, have a good time. And then it, the rest of the weekend kind of duplicates that to a degree. Of course, there's not another golf event, but we switch the golf event, which is a physical activity for the adults, and we substitute the kids. Mm -hmm. um, Optimum Prep is really focused on developing kids early. And so the biggest thing that we want to provide those kids is different, um, you know, knickknacks and tips on how to get through that, whether it's class, with your mental focus, uh, your character development, how to kind of hone in on them soft skills. And then, of course, the, the, the key concepts are math, reading, and financial literacy. Um, numbers are the reason why we focus on that. So just last year, it was, it was um, reported about 51% are failing math, 52 are failing reading. Mm -hmm. And that's 7th and 8th grade. Okay, so then from there, we put in financial literacy because we know that our world is, is built on you know, being able to save a dollar and turn it into more. So giving those kids those key concepts is really important for the, uh, the OP program. And then Layla's Love jumps in on there with, uh, we have brought several nonprofits from around the area. They'll all be um, accessible that morning. Um, the kids in general, there'll be um, quite a few kids. We're, we're estimating somewhere between 12 and 1,500 kids. Wow. To be able to uh, help kids helping kids while helping adults. Bringing in our leaders, bringing in the, the community advocates and the corporate folks to work together with the kids providing opportunity for the homeless, um, food, clothing, 
little bits and pieces there that they'll be able to take back to their cities. Most mm -hmm. kids won't come from one area, they'll come from around the entire metro. Mm -hmm. And those type of things really, really create, create that, that social togetherness. togetherness. Mm -hmm. and, and it gives a lot of people an opportunity to do something that they've probably never done before. Giving is, is, is normal, mm -hmm. but giving in such an abundance is not necessarily um, habitual around here. Mm -hmm. Not, and when I say around here, I'm talking about in America. Mm -hmm. So when we get those opportunities, we gotta, you know, make them as big as we can and make them as fun as we can so that people wanna get, get used to doing it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll wrap up the entire weekend with the C-suite forum. And I'm excited about that. That's, that's um, it's gonna be at the uh, Rangers game. Okay. You know, so getting an opportunity to bring that sports and entertainment industry in um, with the corporate crowd for the purposes that we're utilizing for the kids that's what makes it well-rounded. Mm -hmm. Now, it sounds good. Now we have to <laughs> weather this, this May, go through June, and then boom, here comes July, and we get to kind of okay. kick it off. Well, you did, uh, you did provide us with a, uh, with a short video mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. summarizes things a little bit. So why don't we take a look at that now, okay. and then we'll talk a little bit more about it uh, when we come back from the video. Okay, so there's a little bit more information, kind of that concise video format for, for our viewers about the Impact Weekend. And I noticed that you put, you know, different uh, contact information up there for different uh, social platforms and things like that. And um, I know that we're, uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it and participating in it. Not, not only the golf piece of it, but the, yes, but the rest of it as well. So, I'm looking forward to golf. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've <laughs> even started my scheduling. Like, I'm, I'm golfing. Well, as long as this weather holds up, yeah. um, we'll, we'll get to be in the golf atmosphere tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, golfing Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, I got some, um, some golf, what is it, with the pro. We're going to do some pro activity with mm -hmm. some uh, pros on Friday. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday. So I'm trying to make sure that I can at least get the ball from the tee to to the green. You know, I might take me seven or eight swings, but I'm trying to get there. Yeah. Just make sure three of those are practice swings, and then you'll be good. Right? Because then hey, it's only four. Look, I have, I have over 40-some-odd days to, to, you know, perfect this swing. And I, I know I'm not going to do it, but as long as I play better than some of those other guys that you see hacking at the ground, right. then I'll be happy. Trust yeah. me. I don't want to lose too many balls. Well, you have an advantage because you're a natural athlete anyway, right? God yeah. Well, <laughs> I, some days I don't know if that uh, sustains in golf. Uh, was it golf, ping pong, swimming? Yeah. I can drown in the pool right. easily. Yeah. But I look forward to it. It's going to be fun. And, I, and it's well, what you need to do is schedule a uh, flag football game. Then you then you can mm. blow everybody away on the you field, know what? right? I, you, know, <laughs> you know, I tore my Achilles a couple years ago, and so I I may be uh, we may all be on the same same speed now. <laughs> okay. But I'll at least do my best. Okay. We'll get some things going though, different sports and different activities. So let's talk a little bit about. I mean, you've got this big event coming up. I mean, obviously, you know, the the marketing piece of that is big, but Let's flip that around and look at it from the perspective of a company that wants to get involved mm -hmm. with an event like that, and just about some of the, some of the benefits of using events as a marketing tool mm -hmm. or tactic. Um, you know, we try to, a lot of our clients that we work with, uh, depending upon the strategies that we develop for them. Sometimes the event piece of that is a big piece of that strategy because mm -hmm. you can do everything you want to all day long online right. and, you know, in a digital format, but a lot of times it's you know, that face-to-face -face and actually being at an event you know, you know, pre pre press feel. the flesh, you know, you kind know, of at the... the right, sure, exactly. Sure. So talk a little bit about the, the approach um, of using events as a marketing tool. Yes, sir. So um, every event is going to be different. I don't care if you're doing a repetitive event from week to <clears> week. It's going to have something that's going to be different, whether it's the weather, um, whether it's the number of folks that show up. 
So preparation for these events is always important. Um, not just what we expect to have, but what are we doing to actually make that number a reality. Um, so you have your social media activity. I try to break down um, everything based off of uh, a few core values. We call them our core focus responsibilities. So for, for us in general, I'll use us as an example. Um, we have the uh, Optimum Prep, we have Layla's Love, and then we have our, our corporate branding and marketing activations. Those things then lead to another level. How are we actually getting the information out? So we got our distribution channels. And then after that, we go back and figure out what key components do we have to succeed at to make this, number one, actually you know, come to life. And that's the beginning. Every event that you try to put together, you're going to miss something, right? And so we want to try to be at least 80 to 85 percent intact with everything that we provide. That number, if we do it right, we should be able to be on the higher side of that. Mm -hmm. So should, we should be able to be beyond 85 percent. Um, I think who is in your network is important. How you utilize them is important. Um, so we try to break down uh, for businesses, do you want to be a thought leader? Um, do you just want branding? Is that all you're after? Or do you want to just have association? So we call those folks affiliates. Time is going to be a big factor in this because the more time you have, nine times out of ten, the better oiled it'll be. But if you're going to kind of, you know, put bits and pieces here, then you should not have large um, thoughts of it being, you know, huge. Mm. For this particular event, uh, companies have the opportunity to be thought leaders. They have the opportunity to brand themselves. Now, our branding is going to be a little different than some others because I, I'm a disruptor, so I like to go against the grain. Um, I've never been huge with the social media movement, but I understand it well enough that, you know, whether we're talking about direct messaging, posting schedules, or even just the way you utilize your story, um, we try to make that unique for the corporation. Uh, the different tiers that we utilize to target the individuals, as you saw in the video, we're in a subjective form. So everything that we're going to do for tech, we're going to hit tech heavy. And we're mm -hmm. going to hit tech on every angle so that anybody in tech, they at least get wind of it if it doesn't pertain to them. Mm -hmm. As a, a company, well, if you're in tech or you want to be in tech or tech just has your, 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 your focus right now, then by all means, that would be the angle that you would want to utilize. So you have... Um, I think we have five, we have six total factors that we consider, and this is for every company, whether you're a, a small business, whether you're a mid-level corporation, or you're a Fortune 500, we're going to put you through this. Um, I've been working with a couple different athletes, uh, nonprofit organizations. Um, we actually have, uh, we're in conversation with a very, very large industrial group right now, and they're not in that category. So it's community success would be their thing because mm -hmm. they're not in real estate, they're not in tech, they're not in business law, so they have to push the angle that's going to give them the most attention. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that those, those are the, the bare-naked beginnings. Mm -hmm. I mean, then when you start going into it, you've got you to factor money. Mm -hmm. How much are you going to put in on your paid ads? How much are you going to factor in on your groundwork? I think that's something that we, we mess up at with event marketing, with even regular marketing. We are so gung-ho on automation. We're so gung-ho on social media. And we forget what got us there, which was word of mouth, mm. which was on the ground, you know, being able to product or uh, print, print material placement. Mm. Once you get this part done with the digital, I think that it's very easy to get hung up on that. But when you think about your network, you think about the money you're going to put in, and you think about how you're utilizing non-digital factors, mm -hmm. I think that it's what makes everything a little bit more well-rounded. Yeah. And I always try to stay true to my roots, and, and I'm, I'm more of a touch guy. Right. Know? So when it comes to this, you know, I love what I can do from this, but if I can sit up here and be able to touch a room, go to a networking event, be around different people, mm -hmm. I feel way more confident in my outcomes. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, a lot of people discount uh, now, now, you know, today's time. They just want to sit behind their screen and communicate from behind a screen. <laughs> yeah, the air conditioner hits yeah. differently out here and yeah. in here than it does when you're out there. In yeah, the streets. but they they discount the importance of and and of that quality kind of interaction, mm -hmm. and it's uh, much more. You can be much more spontaneous, and also, I think, deliver a much clearer message based on the passion that you can show to somebody in person versus, you know, trying to communicate that, you know. I think video comes 
as close to that as you can get. Right, right. You know, for, you know, through through a, through a screen, but um, but even with that, I mean, it's important to, and, and it's amazing how you can connect with somebody online and then. When you meet them in person, it it just reinforces or or strengthens that that, that, that relationship, yeah. and vice versa. If you meet them in person first and then connect with them online, then you already have that kind of basis of the uh, the relationship started. My big thing yeah. is balance, man. Yeah. We 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 we're missing balance, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, as a as a as a president, as a CEO, the one thing that majority of them are missing is that connection. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's just not enough time, man. Mm -hmm. We're in meetings. We're networking. We're we're trying to be uh, family oriented, and when it comes to that that balance, you gotta have a little bit more connection with the ground. Mm -hmm. you gotta have a little bit more connection with your audience on a level that's away from the computer, mm -hmm. away from the phone, away from anything technical. And so within this, that's why we have Layla's Love. We want those those administrators, those C-suite folks, to be able to connect and see it. Mm -hmm. Maybe the only time they do it all year, that's fine because that's not what they signed up to do every day. Mm -hmm. But when you start doing those things and you get your team behind you, get your administrative staff, your employees, your entire um, organization is going to feel different. Uh, mm -hmm. I got to go to Jamaica uh, back in February and to go there, or I went on a missions trip, to be able to do something like that, it looks good on the screen, it sounds good when you're, you're, you're listening to other people talk about it, but the hands-on time was, that was spent I've helped, I help, I, I'm in America every day, helping people, helping kids. We're, we're donating on a constant level. Um, we average somewhere around 1,500 kids a year that we do some type of, you know, um, free or, you know, uh, tuition covered activity. Mm. You went, uh, that, that moment, it was different. It mm. just changed my perspective on a few things. It even adjusted how we, how we give here, how mm. we operate within uh, these uh, American walls. So mm. that, 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 when you get that opportunity, I think it just changes the entire um, the entire mindset of what you're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. And it makes you want to make more money. <laughs> that's right. Um, so I think I mean I think that's a nice positive note to kind of to kind of wrap things yeah, up on. Yeah, so I, I definitely love it. Um, so before we go though, uh, let our audience know the best way uh, to reach you, particularly if they're interested in uh, Impact Weekend. Um, either attending or most importantly sponsoring some of yes, those yes. activities and getting involved with some of your own event marketing through an event that somebody else has done all the work to set up for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do the work for you. Yeah, right? so <laughs> Just come, smile, yeah. uh, you know, be glad of all the great things that we're able to do. Yeah. Um, so within this, we, we always want to make sure we give consultations. We're not here to uh, take money and just throw it away. We mm -hmm. want to let not only sponsors, but donors and, and even some of our uh, thought leaders to understand exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the entire process from now all the way three months after, that's the best part about it. Anything you're doing with marketing, if it doesn't have something that follows it past the event, past the time that you're focusing on, mm -hmm. then it's not set up properly. Because at the end of the day, the return doesn't come the day that you work, it comes after mm -hmm. the, the work is done. So um, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Diggs Impact. That's D-I-G-S-I-M-P-A-C-T. Uh, our website is diggsimpact.org. Um, we, we have a phone number, too. Um, <laughs> it's 214-937-9129. Uh, and okay. if that is wrong, it's because my phone is dead and I don't know. Where, <laughs> I don't call it enough anymore. Right. But um, let's see, what else? We're on uh, IG, Facebook website and then of course optimum prep usa on youtube uh those would be probably the best factors uh, linkedin linkedin as well yeah definitely linkedin's davis integration group okay trying to get a couple of things going with linkedin we um we have an app that we're releasing on the first weekend which is dallas mm. and that app will be accessible through linkedin okay i think we're going to be able to adjust how we network make it a little more fun okay a little more engaging um, a little more incentive. I mm. think we network, we go, we get a you know a couple cards, but we don't really get that education we're looking for. Mm. So I look forward to that coming up. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank I know you you're a busy man. Yes, sir, thank yes, you for sir. stopping by and having a conversation with us. I appreciate and it. And next week on Digital Marketing Today, we have Tracy Litz from Shrax Social, and we're going to be talking about all things social media management, marketing, 
display, proximity, all of those types of marketing tools and tactics. So don't miss next week. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on Digital Marketing Today.